here's the deal when we are doing differentiation the place that we need to use the chain loop is the place that we have to do the u substitution if you want to do the integral this video is sponsored by Brilliant. You can learn more integration techniques via the link below. Okay, if you like integrals, they should definitely know the Weierstrass Strass substitution because this right here will help you to solve integrals of rational functions in terms of sine and cosine. A classic example is the integral 1 over 2 plus cosine x. And of course, if you would like, please go ahead and try this. But if you get stuck, don't worry because you can just let t to be tangent of x over 2 and this right here is going to work out really nicely. Yeah, this right here is really obvious. And by the way, this right here is called the tangent half angle substitution as well. Yeah, very obvious. <laughs> anyway, though, in fact, according to Professor Spivak, he calls this the sneakiest substitution in the world. Because seriously, how in the world? Did he know to do this in the first place? And if you look at this integral, it has no tangent at all, let alone tangent of x over 2. But seriously, it works very nicely. So that's the biggest question. And if you have seen this substitution before, I think that's the biggest question that you have as well. I have no idea how he came up with this. And I don't think nobody knows. But I do notice there might be one encounter that he had, because that's the encounter that I had as well, um, that somehow suggests that, hey, maybe this right here works. So I want to share with you guys that, and uh, maybe this right here will give you guys some insight. Yeah? So here we go. This right here is actually from my integral battle from many, many years ago. Yeah, so go ahead and check that out if you would like. Let's consider the integral cosecant of 2x. And I'm not going to do the standard trick, and um, I'm not going to... Let, let me just do it. Yeah. So anyway, though, here we go. Integral, and let's look at this as 1 over sine of 2x. And if you wonder why I have the 2x, it's because once we have sine of 2x, it's more natural to use the double angle identity, right? It's more natural to use it. Of course, if you have just x inside, you can still use the double angle identity if you would like. Anyway, though, on the top we have 1, and here we go. Everybody knows cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. But we know 1 is equal to cosine squared x plus sine squared x. I'm sorry, just wanted to do that. Anyway, <laughs> we have the 1 half, so take that to the front. And then let's split the fraction. We have cosine squared over this and one of the cosine cancel out, so we have cosine x over sine x, and the other one is sine x over cosine x. Now, let's of course integrate this. Well, let's do u sub, but better yet, let's do u sub in our head. So the first one, we will get ln absolute value of sine x. And I want to use up right here as well, so we get minus ln absolute value of cosine x, right? And notice, we can combine the natural log. So here we get 1 half ln absolute value sine over cosine. And of course, that gives us tangent x. So this right here is just a way to integrate cosecant of 2x. But notice though, once you have this result, you can actually figure out what the integral of cosecant x is. Again, you do have the standard trick, you do have the standard result, but if you want to use this right here, you will end up ln absolute value of tangent of x over 2 plus c. And do you guys see it? Yes, yes, yes. This right here is the tangent of x over 2. Check this out though. This integral, if you rewrite this as 1 over sine, again, it has nothing to do with tangent of x over 2 in the integral, right? But the result is, and just imagine, if I ask you guys to check the answer by differentiation, then you will have to differentiate ln absolute value of tangent of x over 2, right? Now, here's the deal. One of the most important things when we're doing differentiation is the chain loop. A lot of students make a mistake of not using the chain rule, and then of course they got the whole thing wrong. 
Well, first, we will have to differentiate ln, so you get 1 over that. And now the Chengdu says we have to multiply by the derivative of this. So I'm just going to you know, leave that inside for you, then leave that for you guys. But anyway though, here's the deal. When we are doing differentiation, the place that we need to use the Chengdu is the place that we have to do the u substitution if you want to do the integral, right? Because remember, u sub is just like a way to undo the Chengdu. It's just one way to see it. So I think this is the place that suggests us that, hey, maybe you can just take a variable, but I want to be respectful. So let's use t right here instead of the traditional u, right? So let's say t. Let t equal to tangent of x over 2, and let's try to figure out other things based on this, and maybe it will help us to solve the integral, and maybe it will help us to figure this out. And remember, this right here is really the integral 1 over sine x, right? So maybe we just have to figure out sine x and cosine x in terms of um, t once we have this substitution. So we will have to see like, how this is going to help us. So again, hopefully this helps. And uh, I'm just going to show you guys the expressions for sine x and cosine x in terms of t. And I'll also give you guys the dx. All right. Here we go. Take a look right here. I'm going to just write yes. Uh, tangent x over 2, and we're going to call this to be t, right? Again, just the traditional uh, letter for the y stress substitution. But anyway, let's look at this as t over 1. Why? Because once we have this, we can look at right triangle. This is going to help us with the expression for the other things as well. Anyway, tangent of x over 2. The x over 2 is the angle, so I'll put it here. t is the opposite, 1 is the adjacent. And now for the hypotenuse, it's just the square root of this square plus that square, so it's just 1 plus t squared. So based on this triangle, we need to figure out cosine x and also sine x, and also the dx. Well, let's do cosine. Let's do uh, sine first. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, let's do sine x. As I told you guys earlier, you don't see the 2, right? But like, you can still use the double angle identity. How? Have a look. This is the same as saying sine of 2 times 1 half x, right? So let me just write it as x over 2. Aha! Now, we can use this nicely. Put the 2 in the front. And then this becomes sine of x over 2 times cosine of x over 2. And you see why I did that, because now we have this 2 right here. And then sine of x over 2, we can just refer that to this right triangle. It's just the opposite over hypotenuse. Therefore, we get t over square root of 1 plus t squared. Similarly, if this is going to give us this over that, 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared. And very nicely, we get 2t over 1 plus t squared. So, Please keep in mind, this right here is the expression for sine x. And of course, we also need to find out the expression for cosine, so let's do that right here. And do the same thing. So cosine, I'm going to look at that as cosine of 2 times x over 2. And yeah, you have three versions of the double angle identity for cosine. Use whichever one that you like. I'm just going to write it as 2, and I'm just going to write it as cosine of this angle, which is x over 2, and then I'm going to square that, and then minus 1, yep. So one of the versions of the double angle identity for cosine x. Anyway, here is the 2, and cosine of x over 2 is just 1 over that. So here we have 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared, in the parentheses, and square that, and minus 1. This is just that, and we have the 2 on the top, so 2 over 1 plus t squared minus 1, which is the same as 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And finally, 2 minus 1 is 1, and then minus t squared, right, because minus times that, don't forget about that. So we have 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And ladies and gentlemen, this right here is an expression for cosine x. Now, we need to find out what dx is. And you have a few choices, but I'm going to choose the easiest one. I'm going to come back right here, right? So, let me do it in blue. Why not? 
Have a look right here. Tangent of x over 2 is equal to t. This implies x over 2 is equal to inverse tangent of t. I'm just taking the I'm just taking the inverse tangent on both sides and then multiply the two so we get x equals 2 inverse tangent of t and of course now we can just do the derivative right just do the derivative so here we get uh, it's supposed to be d dt yeah x is the function of t d dt but anyway though i'm just going to put on dx right here and then this is going to be 2 and then the derivative of inverse tangent is just 1 plus t squared and then i'll put the dt right here have a look we have this, this, and that. And these are the three main ingredients when we are doing the uh, y stress substitution. Of course, that is also the main key as well. Hey, if you enjoy learning new math that's usually not taught in school, then you should definitely check out Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that makes learning interactive, accessible, and fun. The approach is based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing the concept visually and interacting with them so the concept will stick with you. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so you can tackle them a bit at a time. And once you're on Brilliant, unlike school, there's no tests or grades and you can pick a course that you like including algebra, geometry, calculus, and you can also do some programming or maybe some cutting edge topics such as cryptocurrency or quantum computing. And right now it's the best time to get started because it's a new year and I also have a discount code for you if you guys go to the link brilliant.org slash blackpinkredpen which is linked in the description and you can actually get a 20% off for their annual premium subscription. Thank you for checking it out and thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Alright, now it's the time to integrate this guy with the wire strap substitution. So I will first write this as the integral 1 over sine x. And of course we still have the dx right here. Well, now we can say sine x is equal to that. So here we will have 1 over 2t over 1 plus t squared. And then the dx is the same as that, which is just 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. So we are in the t world when we are, in the, when we are doing the wire stress substitution. Now, here's the best part, of course. Notice this and that cancel, and the two cancel out as well. And if you guys look at this, we end up with the integral of just 1 over t in the t world. Isn't this just going to give us natural log absolute value of t? And now what's t? Of course, refer back to this. We have the tangent of x over 2. Just like that, plus c. So what do you guys think? How pretty is this, right? Again, if you want to do the derivative to check the answer, this is the part that requires the chain do. So maybe for what do integrals, this part right here is the part that requires to be the u, or in this case the t, right? Okay, I will work out this integral on my other channel for you guys, my fast channel, yeah? Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, that's it.